Welcome to another episode of Terry's Notes. Today we are going to be looking at alcohols. Alcohols have a general formula of CnH2n plus 1. And the functional group present in the alcohol group is the hydroxyl group, right? Which is the OH group. The hydroxyl group allows for bonds to be formed with water molecules. Therefore, methanol is soluble in water. As the number of atoms increase in the molecule as you move down the series, the molecule is not able to form strong bonds with water and is therefore less soluble. So, methanol looks like this. And a water molecule looks like this. And we know that a water molecule is polar, so therefore there's a delta negative charge on the oxygen atom and a delta positive charge on the hydrogen atoms and what happens is that you form a strong bond between this hydrogen and this oxygen so that is what makes methanol soluble in water but as the size of the hydrocarbon chain increases so for example if you have a molecule that looks like this and this molecule is trying to dissolve in water You have this part of the molecule being polar and we have this part of the molecule being non-polar. So therefore the bonds that we form with water are weak and therefore this compound will not dissolve in water. Volatility is the prop property is the property of changing readily from a solid or liquid into a vapor. If there are strong bonds present between the molecules, they are less volatile. If you were to compare ethanol to ethane, you will find that ethanol is less volatile than ethane, and this is because of the presence of the OH bond. Let's look at the homologous series for alcohols. We just indicated that the general formula is C N H two N plus one OH. So therefore the first member of the series is methanol. So therefore it has one carbon atom. So it'll be C we usually don't write the one. So it'll be C H two by one plus one equals three. And we put the OH. And this is the displayed formula for methanol. In the case of ethanol, we have two carbon atoms, and the formula becomes C. We have two, and it'll be two multiplied by two, which is four plus one, which gives us five. So it'll be C25H. And this is the displayed formula for ethanol. In the case of propanol, we have three carbon atoms, so it'll be C3H. Using the formula again, it'll be 2 multiplied by 3, which is 6, plus 1, which is 7, OH. And therefore, this will represent the displayed formula for propanol. In the case of butanol, we have four carbon atoms, so it'll be C4H. 
2 multiplied by 4 is 8 plus 1 gives us 9. So it's C4, H9, OH. And this represents the displayed formula for butanol. We're going to look at the reactions of the members of the alcohol group and what we're going to use as example is ethanol and the formula for ethanol is C2H5OH Ethanol burns in oxygen with a clean blue flame to produce carbon dioxide, water and heat and this is the formula for the reaction we have C2H5OH plus 3O2 produces 2CO2 plus 3H2O. The next reaction we're going to look at is the reaction with sodium. Sodium reacts with ethanol to produce sodium etoxide and hydrogen gas. Now let's draw what is happening here. So we have ethanol this is a displayed formula for ethanol and we're going to react it with sodium and what we're going to get is and we usually Okay, now to balance the equation, we have to put two here, two in front of the sodium, and two here. So now you can see what is happening. The sodium is replacing the hydrogen atom. So therefore, what we get is sodium etoxide, which is this compound here. This here is sodium etoxide. Okay. The next reaction we're going to look at is dehydration. Ethanol can be dehydrated to produce ethene. And you need to familiarize yourself with the conditions for this reaction. The temperature is 170 degrees Celsius. And we are using concentrated sulfuric acid. So now let's draw what is happening here. Now what I'm going to do is put the OH here instead so that you can see clearly what is happening. Now this is a dehydrate reaction as we can see water is coming out. So we start off with ethanol and what is happening is that this H and this OH is being removed so if you remove this H and this OH what happens is that we get a double bond here and water is eliminated so this reaction is a dehydration reaction and like I said you need to know the conditions 180 degrees Celsius and concentrated sulfuric acid the other reaction we need to know is oxidation Ethanol reacts with acidified potassium manganate 7 to produce ethanoic acid. The potassium manganate 7 is an oxidizing agent. So what happens is that we get, in this case here we have, we start off with ethanol. When we write an oxidation reaction, we usually write an oxygen atom in square brackets to indicate that it is oxidation.
So the alcohol is being oxidized to produce ethanoic acid. So this is ethanoic acid and water. Now, potassium manganate 7 is purple. And when it reacts with the alcohol, it changes into a colorless solution. What you will be asked to do is to explain what is happening. Now, we know that the potassium manganate 7 is an oxidizing agent. And when it acts as an oxidizing agent, it is itself reduced. The purple color is due to the manganese having an oxidation state of plus 7. So we have, it is manganese. And the oxidation state is initially, initially plus 7. And when it is reduced, it changes oxidation state to plus 2. When we have a reduction in oxidation number, we say that the species is reduced. Now, ethanol also reacts with acidified potassium dichromate 6, which is K2Cr2O7. In this case, the reaction will be very similar. Now, in the case of potassium and dichromate 6, this is used in the breathalyzer test. The potassium dichromate 6 crystals are moistened with concentrated sulfuric acid. And when a drunk driver breathes into the device, the alcohol vapor in the breath is oxidized by the potassium dichromate 6 into ethanoic acid. So what happens in this case though is that the color is initially orange and when it reacts with the alcohol it changes to green. Now you need to be able to explain what is happening again here. The species we are looking at here is the chromium and the chromium is represented by CR and the orange color is due to chromium being in the plus 6 oxidation state. And when it is reduced, it goes to the plus 3 oxidation state, which is green. So in an examination question, you need to be able to say that the acidified potassium dichromate 6 is an oxidizing agent. It will oxidize the alcohol into ethanoic acid and it will be reduced so the chromium is reduced from oxidation state plus six to plus three and that is why we get the color change from orange to green the next reaction we need to look at is esterification when a mixture of ethanol and ethanoic acid is heated under reflux in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid an ester called ethyl ethanoate is formed so if we were to represent this using displayed formulas we start off with ethanoic acid which is CH3 COOH and it's reacting with ethanol which is C2H5OH now this reaction is a reversible reaction so this is what this symbol means the conditions as we said are heating under reflux in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid and this represents ethyl ethanoate, right? Ethyl ethanoate is an ester. And esters are usually sweet smelling, right? We find esters in food flavorings, in perfumes. Now what is happening here, the OH from the acid and H from the alcohol produces water 
and a bond is formed between the ethanoic acid and the ethanol. This type of reaction is called a condensation reaction, right? Or is sometimes referred to as esterification. You need to know what is the ester linkage. This is the ester linkage, right? I've drawn it separately here. This diagram shows how the reaction is done in the laboratory. This is what you call, this is a condenser. This part is a condenser. And this is a flask where the reaction mixture is. So you have the ethanol plus the ethanoic acid. Okay, and any vapors that try to escape as it passes through the condenser, it will con be converted back into a liquid and drip back into the flask. The next thing you need to know is fermentation. Ethanol can also be prepared by a process of fermentation and the type of fermentation is what we call anaerobic fermentation which is really oxidation without the presence of oxygen so yeast is added to a glucose solution so we start off by having yeast and we also have a glucose solution and it has to be in a warm environment. An enzyme in the yeast called zymase breaks down the glucose anaerobically, that is, without oxygen, to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. So what happens is that you see bubbles of carbon dioxide being produced in the solution. The en enzymes die when the reaction when the concentration of the ethanol reaches about 14%. Fractional distillation is used to produce ethanol of a higher concentration by volume. So you also need to be able to write an equation for this fermentation reaction. So we started off with glucose, which is C6H12O6. And what is produced is ethanol, which is C2H5OH, plus carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is seen as bubbles. And you need to know that the ethanol is only about, has a concentration of about 14% 14, 14 by volume. If you want to obtain ethanol of a, of a higher concentration, you need to perform fractional distillation. Temperatures in excess of 40 degrees will denature the en enzymes in the yeast. So you need to be familiar with this term, denature. Don't say it will kill the enzymes, it denatures the enzymes. Fermentation will stop at high temperatures. In the case of winemaking, yeast is added to grapes and the enzymes react with the grape juice to produce ethanol. In the case of rum making, the yeast is added to molasses, an enzyme in the yeast called invertase digests the sucrose in the molasses into glucose and fructose. The yeast then ferments the glucose and fructose into ethanol and the mixture is then distilled to produce rum.